Hello everyone! Welcome back to our creative writing class. For today's lessons, which are lessons 3 and 4, we will discuss about language of creative writing, figures of speech, and diction. Again, this is Mrs. Jessa Simiyage, your creative writing teacher. Writing imaginably requires using language which brings alive the words we put in a paper. A language that has the ability to make something ordinary a special one. This language are words that elevate the mind and bring both the writer and reader on the same page. At the end of these lessons, you should be able to First, define figures of speech and diction. Second, appreciate the use of figures of speech and diction in creative writing. Third, enumerate the different figures of speech. And fourth, write a short creative piece which contains figures of speech and diction. Now let's talk about figures of speech and its types one by one. But first, let us discuss what the definition of figures of speech is. It creates the so-called figurative images which increase reading pleasure and which would deepen the reader's comprehension of a text. So, when we read poetry, fiction, or drama, certain images in our minds make us imagine what the writer really talks about. And it therefore increases our joy as we read the text and also our understanding deepens. Let us read and discuss the sample text from Waiwaya by F. Chanil Jose. Then she burst into view, a girl lovely as moon and just as fair. Notice how the girls loveliness was compared to the morning lovely as morning and just as fair so it is an example of simile which is an indirect comparison of two things using like or as and therefore as we can see here it has the word as Let's now study the sample text from If You Forget Me by Pablo Neruda. Everything that exists, aromas, light, metals, were little boats that set toward the house of yore that wait for me. So in this sample text, we see that everything that exists, according to the persona, were little boats. So it is or they are compared to little boats without the use of like or as. So this is an example of metaphor which is actually a direct comparison between two objects which no longer have to use like or as. Let's read this another example. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The courage held, but just ourselves and immortality. This is an excerpt from Because I Could Not Stop for Death by Emily Dickinson. So the death here is actually talk, like talked to as a person, but actually it's not. And some of the human qualities of a person is attributed to death. So it is an example of personification, which is an attribution of human qualities to a thing. Next example. Well now, one winter it was so cold that all the geese flew backward and all the fish moved south, south and even the snow turned blue. Late at night, it got so frigid that all spoken words froze solid before they could be heard. This is from Babe the blue ox as retold by S. E. Schlosser. So uh, somehow all the words here, phrases here, are exaggeration. So meaning to say all the geese 
flew backward. All the fish moved south, and even the snow turned blue. Late at night, it got so frigid that all spoken words froze. So technically, these are all exaggeration, which is an example of hyperbole. Next, from Home Burial by Robert Frost. Leap up like that, like that, and land so lightly. What seems to be so repetitious in this sample text? You're right. The letter L, R, here repeatedly. The initial sound or word of each word here are repetitive. So it is an example of alliteration, which is the repetition of the first consonant of the neighboring words. An example text from Walden by Henry David Thoreau. The morning wind forever blows. The poem of creation is uninterrupted. But few are the ears that hear it. Olympus is but the outside of the earth everywhere. So, let us check if it has this allusion or use of person, place, or thing as reference. So, for us to be able to have a good grasp of the words, you know, the nouns, special nouns, or rather the proper nouns in what we are reading, some words like Olympus. So when we uh, hear Olympus, we, we somehow go back to the gods and goddesses. Um, where they abode or where they live so by using this word but by attributing this word Olympus we have a good grasp of what is being described here a place like this another sample text from the catcher in the rye by JD Salinger boy I rang the doorbell fast when it got to old Spencer's house. Try to pay close attention to the word rang because this is an example of an onomatopoeia or the use of words that mimic sounds. So ringing the doorbell, the word rang there is an example of word that mimic sound. Okay, so these are seat words preferably for you that are already in our Google Classroom. Now let's go and discuss diction. Let us define diction. It refers to language and word choice of the writer. It also shows the level of formality of a text which helps in shaping the perception and view of the readers. Now there are three levels of diction. First is formal, second is informal, and the last one is colloquial. An example of formal diction is this. Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore, ye soft pipes play on. By an ode on a Grecian urn by John Keats. Another example of formal diction. Ah! Happy, happy thoughts that cannot shed your leaves, now ever be the spring adieu. By again the same text from John Keats. So as we further discuss formal, dis dis discuss formal diction, it is also an academic or scholarly language. Now let's compare uh, these words under informal and formal. So, it is informal to say as, but the formal is inquire. As for, to be formal is request, book, reserve, check, verify, from, on behalf of, get, receive, give, provide. Help, assist, need, request, 
Say sorry, apologize. Say hello to, give my regards to. Tell, inform, I think. It's, it is my opinion that job, occupation. How about colloquial and formal? Let us see their comparison. Ben got sick of waiting. Then the formal is Ben is tired of waiting. I see where you are coming from. The formal is I understand you, your point. The Knicks pulled it off. Or the Knicks succeeded in formal. Leia had one of those days. In formal, Leia had a difficult day. We're in a bind. In formal, we're in trouble. I don't have that much of a chance. Formal is I don't have a very good chance. Informal diction is more of a conversational language. From the sun rising by John Donne, Busy old fool, unruly son, why dost thou thus, through windows and through curtains, call on us? Must to thy motions, lover seasons run? Saucy pedantic wretch, go child. Colloquial diction is a slang language. It captures a regional dialect. Now, what is the function of diction? Writers choose words to create and convey a typical mood, tone, and atmosphere to the readers. So it has the ability to set the mood or tone or atmosphere of a particular a setting in a particular example of creative writing piece. A writer's choice of words and his selection of gra graphic words not only affect the reader's attitude but also conveys the writer's feelings toward the literary work. So those are the function of diction. Then the following activities can be found in your in our Google Classroom. So that will be all for our lesson for today. I hope that you uh, understand how the language of creative writing works and how figures of speech and diction help us to be able to write something that will help our readers really know what uh, we like to, to express and to be able to explain on an elevated manner what is really in our minds. So, as always, thank you so much for participating in this lesson and hope to hear from you and if you have any questions and comments kindly comment uh, down in the section below for comments and we will meet each other again on the next lesson thank you and goodbye